So hi and welcome back to Night Hacking at Oridev. And now for well the first time I guess or for one of the few times the Night Hacking name is actually <laughs> quite true. So <laughs> now we have a new guest, uh, Pete Jaworski, yeah. who actually does some hacking, some real hacking, not just not just coding like <laughs> most of us. So hi Pete, thanks for taking the time. And could you well briefly introduce yourself? What uh, sure. what you're doing and what what you have in common with hacking? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so first off, thanks for the opportunity. Um, so as you mentioned, Pete Jaworski. Um, I s in terms of like hacking, um, I got started in bug bounties, uh, and that was mm -hmm. kind of the end of 2015. Okay. Um, and then that led me to uh, like fast forward a little bit, uh, an opportunity to work at Shopify. So right now my full time job is application security at Shopify, mm -hmm. and I'm still doing bug bounties uh, pretty much my free time. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's um, mostly web applications that you do bug bounties for. Most of the yeah, most of the time uh, I spend uh, focused on web applications. Uh, a little bit of mobile, but the mobile is just kind of more like just API hacking. Mm. So it's almost sim right. very similar to web hacking in that you're testing the same things. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I had more time, I would love to look at like hardware, mm. mobile, kind of like if car hacking in the ideal right. world. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very nice. <laughs> so I'm interested. Wha what are typical or most, I would say, common exploits you would find in a typical en enterprise application is things like SQL injection or XSS or yeah, what, do you, what do you find? That's a good question. I mean, XSS by far is kind of like the most prevalent okay. and available, right? Like it's, uh, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Um, beyond that, like me, it's so hard to move away from XSS just because right. it's so easy, it's so lucrative, it, it pays the bills and bug bounties, but okay. it gets super boring, <laughs> right? Um, the other thing that I, I tend to find the most of, I think, is uh, like information disclosures, right? Oh, or okay. Like mm -hmm. information that's not supposed to be out there that right. uh, you end up coming across. Uh, that's kind of been the other bug that I tend to find. And then uh, I'll usually kind of go after like functional based bugs, right? Okay. Like uh, using an application the way it shouldn't be used and, right. and what that uh, what that results in. But yeah, um, in terms of like people I talk to, there are definitely like experts out there that, especially in enterprise, that are still finding SQL injections. Like mm -hmm. they're alive and well. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, it just so you know where to start, <laughs> folks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a combination of things, right? Like it's easy to kind of mess up that code, mm -hmm. um, but there's there's so many tools and techniques to apply uh, to fix that. So then, in my my perspective, it comes down to like using libraries or say like tooling mm. that you're not necessarily super yeah. familiar with that you can introduce vulnerabilities that so way. So even yeah, it's 2018, it's still it's still a thing. Exactly, that continues yep. to be a thing. Exactly. Okay. And I don't know if it's from like uh, new applications introducing them. Mm -hmm. uh, with enterprise, a lot of times enterprise is written like five or ten years ago, potentially by some consultant that somebody brought in, depending upon what you're looking at. Um, so that's a factor as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I'm interested, how does a, um, I don't want to say typical day looks like, or a typical way of uh, your work looks like, if you yeah. say you uh, you work for, for Shopify and you, you have all these things out there, these uh, running applications and services, yeah. like uh, what do you typically like start? Do, do you have a, a, a process, a pattern uh, maybe, or just say, oh, let's, today we'll look at this service and try to <laughs> that's exploit it somehow. That's a good <laughs> question. I mean, it, part, of, part of that is that. Um, I think my typical day, like, I tend to get in early and I love our bug bounty program. Mm -hmm. um, like that was one of the reasons why uh, I got interested in Shopify mm -hmm. and how I met them. So I will typically look at our inbox for like the bug bounty program okay. um, and start replying to those. Uh, we do have what we call as like an ATC rule, like somebody who's like air traffic controller for the bug bounty program. Uh, and it's like on a week's rotation. But that doesn't preclude anybody from going ahead and doing that. So I tend to ignore that schedule. And mm -hmm. I kind of, as soon as I'm there, I get in on the bug bounty program, respond to reports, and then just kind of build rapport with people, uh, which has been good because we've seen people kind of miss the mark on the first couple reports. Mm -hmm. uh, you encourage them, kind of steer them the right way, and then they come back with valid reports, which is really cool. Um, that's a great feeling. But then kind of outside of that, um, it's hacking on applications. Um, there's there's so much going on at Shopify. There's so much development happening mm -hmm. uh, to make commerce better that um, devs are pushing out new applications. And so we always want to have a security review of those before yeah, they yeah. go live. 
Um, so it's an opportunity really to just kind of step in, uh, review code and start breaking things if possible. Right. Um, and that's, that's awesome because it, uh, we have hackers that are kind of like working at Shopify. We also have like a secure coding team. So if they have questions, it's kind of like, here's how we broke it. Um, and then we can help you rebuild it mm -hmm. uh, and fix that, which is always good to do that proactively ahead of time getting anything out the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would be your, um, recommendation specifically for enterprise projects who have not that much of a security focus or, um, so, for example, I is it is it better way to say we we in, um, introduce a lot of security tests um, that just uh, run at every uh, release, or do more code reviews and try to find these libraries that are not used in the correct way? Or what's a you know like practical approach for a regular project? It's a great question. Um, I mean, because at the end of the day, and we apply this at Shopify, is we, d we don't want security to hinder kind of like innovation exactly. and development, right? Yeah. So we kind of want to build them together. So that's where, uh, at least at Shopify, we've taken the team and it's, uh, our team's actually split into three, right? So you have builders, breakers, and then mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and the builders, a lot of what time what they're doing is um, we're kind of building tooling A to make Shopify more secure, but we're mm -hmm. also trying to bake that into different processes, okay. right? So yeah. uh, if you spin up a new project, that new project will be initiated uh, with default security built mm -hmm. into it, right? Um, and then from there, we're always available to kind of be pinged and, hey, can you review this? What do you think about this? It's an open channel, but they have a discussion. So if you're taking that to kind of an enterprise level, it's considering security kind of from that day one. So if you're looking at like bringing in third-party libraries, like what do those th third-party libraries look like? Have they had security reviews? Yeah. What do their teams look like? Getting an idea of how they have approached their security and make sure that uh, what you're bringing in doesn't just open more doors. That's kind of the first one. The other one is really investing in tooling and, and um, some type of process that doesn't say hinder that type of deployment of mm -hmm. new code, right? Um, at Shopify, we have to have two reviewers before we push a code that, that can slow things down. But at the same time, we then have the, um, I'll say the confidence to know that three developers have now been involved in this. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, we're a little bit uh, more at ease in yeah. terms of whether things will be yeah. going forward, right? Like with, uh, and it'll be secure coding. So I think, I think that's kind of the biggest approach. Uh, at the end of the day, security has kind of been an afterthought, at least, you know, mm -hmm. I would say like five years prior. Mm -hmm. uh, and then now with these kind of big breaches, it's starting to come to the forefront of the conversation. Right. So having that conversation early and often on security rather than after the fact, I think is probably the, the quickest win that you could have as an enterprise. It makes sense. Makes sense. Um, also, what just uh, came to my mind is it a big issue or big uh, effort to check for um, dependencies and specifically dependency versions of the libraries that you use um, I in the projects, right? So, do you have like processes in place to say, "Oh, please check for these uh, versions or for these known uh, vulnerabilities"? It's a. It's so one of the things that um, we've been lucky with, uh, like we're using GitHub, right? And mm -hmm. so GitHub recently, I want to say like the last six months. Uh, introduce like the vulnerable dependency notification, right? Yeah. So they'll look and see like, is there a, a security advisory or is there a new version of this um, library that you're mm -hmm. using available? And they'll start notifying you of that. So that, that's an opportunity that's as well. Right. And the one thing I didn't mention that comes to mind as you, as you flag that is um, having like a, a continuous integration um, piece to review for security, mm -hmm. right? So you can have those automated tests uh, like Rails uh, and Ruby, uh, Breakman is available that's out there, mm -hmm. right? And we'll look for right. a static code analysis. You can easily implement that. And I think that the static code analysis uh, can include references to like outdated libraries mm -hmm. or that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So um, those are quick wins, right? Yep. Automatic. Uh, you just have to balance signal versus noise in terms of that stuff. Absolutely. All right, so now since we're here at the URDF uh, conference, yeah. and um, what do you specifically uh, like about this conference, or what was your motivation to specifically s go and speak here? Uh, it, was a, it was a few different things, to be honest. Um, so in terms of my motivation for speaking here, it was uh, the organizers that actually reached out to me and said, you know, hey, uh, we've seen kind of what you've done, and we would love to have you kind of come mm -hmm. out and do a talk, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't your typical, like, hey, what do you think? Like, come talk. It was more like they had actually done their research and okay. said, like, we were really interested in the book. We're really interested in your interviews. We think it's really cool what you've done. Would you like to come out and talk? Mm -hmm. And so that, for me, 
just having that personalized experience was was a big win That's and i was nice. absolutely let's do it uh and then they offered me a, a second talk which was great mm -hmm. um because i was i'm coming overseas from canada so right. it was like let's come over do two talks have an opportunity uh so that was really cool and then uh, a friend who's located here in sweden franz rosen um as soon as i said yes like he pinged me uh right away and was he's going to be here talking as well. Uh, so that was cool. Like having friends, uh, okay. like specifically, yeah. like kind of say this is a great conference and, and seeing his vote of confidence for coming over to do a talk was great. Um, in terms of what I've liked about it, like I, to be honest, like I came in with a blank slate in terms mm -hmm. of expectations, but just the depth of and breadth of mm -hmm. content being covered. Like it, it's not one or two security talks. I guess I'm selfish in that respect. Um, but there's like, there's a whole like stream in terms of security, but then there's also um, like every other area that you could think of in terms of tech and development, yeah. like yeah. It, you get that here. Uh, and that's been really cool for me. Yeah. Um, and I think lastly, like just the, um, the welcoming has been really cool. Yeah. Uh, the speaker's dinner yesterday was amazing. Fully agree, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, nice. uh, the venue, like going to City Hall and like the mayor being there. Meeting the mayor, the mayor of yeah. Malmö, like where'd you get that at a conference? Exactly, right? <laughs> and, and like having, and like she stayed for dinner, which I thought was like, that spoke volumes, right? Yes. That was not really just a tokenized um, meet and greet. Mm. It was really like, I, I thought it was and really the cool. The whole evening there, it was really a, the appreciation of yeah. the whole event. And exactly. Everything. Yeah, so, fully agree. So uh, like in terms of like going forward, I would definitely recommend it to anybody if they're thinking about wanting to do a presentation. Uh, this is a great place to do it. Absolutely. I can only second that. So <laughs> yeah, maybe if you have something interesting to share, then you should consider speaking at, uh, at Eurodef and then yeah, we might see you <laughs> at some point here in Sweden. So yeah, Pete, thanks a lot for your time and for, for the interview and mm -hmm. for everybody watching. Well, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.